So good morning, dear students. So in the previous class, we were studying about the superclass Pisces, isn't it? So superclass Pisces and superclass Tetrapoda, they are placed under the Gnathostomata. They have jaws. That is the reason we have placed them under Gnathostomata. So superclass Pisces, they had fins. They bear fins. Superclass Tetrapoda, they have appendages. Tetra means four. Poda means leg. It's not four of you go out. No, that doesn't mean that. Tetrapoda means four limbs are there. Okay. A pair of four limbs, F O R E. A pair of four limbs, a pair of hind limbs. So this is present in case, case of this superclass Tetrapoda. Under this superclass Tetrapoda, which is under Gnathostomata and it is placed under subphylum Vertebrata. You should also remember you are going to study in the superclass tetrapoda four classes. So class are the amphibians, class reptilia, class birds, and class mammals. So the amphibians example you have here in this slide, the frog, then the reptile chameleon, you have an example. So you can notice the seagulls as example for birds and the uh, so the leopard as an example for the mammals okay so the four classes we are going to study is amphibians reptiles birds and mammals so that is what we are going to study about the superclass tetrapoda so you should remember all of them are placed in the superclass tetrapoda because they have jaws they are jawed animals and because they are made up of vertebral column with cranium we have placed them under vertebrata Okay, subphylum vertebrata. Then also you have to remember they are having so placed under superclass tetrapoda because they have limbs. So they have limbs as appendages. Okay, so four limbs are there. F O U R four limbs. Tetra means four. Poda means limbs. Okay, a pair of four limbs. F O R E and a pair of hind limbs we have. So that is what is the uh, attributes of the superclass tetrapoda so let us study about them in detail so the first class that we are going to study under superclass tetrapoda is class amphibia okay so the general characters or the salient features of class amphibia okay the examples you know the frog toad and uh, the salamander ichthyopsis they're all example of this amphibians. So they live in aquatic and terrestrial habitats. So amphibians, they live in aquatic and terrestrial habitats and need water for breeding because they have external fertilization. The gametes are going to fuse in water. So they require water for their breeding purpose. To complete their life cycle, they require water. So they live in the class amphibians, the characters first you can write, they live in aquatic and terrestrial habitats and they need water for breeding. Okay, the body has head and trunk. Some have tail, like uh, the tailed amphibian. You have the salamander as an example for tailed amphibian. Some have tail. So the moist skin they have, the frog. So if you look into toad, the land form of it, the toads, you notice that they have dry skin and warts on them. So even though they are very huge and large in size, the predators don't feed on these frogs because of the poisonous warts that they have on their skin, okay? Toad especially, they don't consume them. So they avoid eating because it leads to indigestion or toxicity, okay? They have moist skin. So in case of the frog, they have moist skin. Toad, they have dry skin with warts. So moist skin without scales, you can notice them. Most of them have two pair of limbs, a pair of four limbs and a pair of hind limbs. So the tympanum represents the ear. They don't have pinna. So directly the eardrum tympanum represents the ear. They have three chambered heart. So they have two auricles and one ventricle. In mammals, we have four chambered heart two auricles and two ventricles. But in case of the frog, they have three chambered heart, two auricles and one ventricle. You can notice in case of uh, these amphibians. So the amphibians live in aquatic and terrestrial habitats and they need water for breeding. 
okay so because they have this external fertilization water is a necessity so for them to complete their life cycle so water is required for the external fertilization to take place so the uh, gametes male and female gametes are released in water and only in the water the gametes fuse to form the zygote they develop to form the tadpole and the tadpole later undergoes metamorphosis to form the adult frog so all that stages you know about it isn't it so the body is divided into head and trunk some of them have tail like salamander so moist skin they have without scales so most of these amphibians have two pair of limbs a pair of forelimb and a pair of hind limb so tympanum or the eardrum directly represents the ear so they have three chambered hearts two auricles and one ventricle and other characters are they are poikilothermic that is they are cold blooded animals they do not have a constant body temperature so their body temperature is dependent upon the uh, external uh, temperatures okay they don't have a constant body temperature that is the reason we call them as cold blooded uh, animals so they are ectothermic that is their body temperatures are dependent upon the uh, external surroundings whereas the homeothermic or warm blooded animals uh, they have a constant body temperature and they are endothermic okay so the poikilotherms or cold blooded animals so frogs are the amphibians are poikilotherms so they have a digestive system that is the alimentary canal urinary and reproductive tracts who opens through a common uh, opening so we don't call it as an anus because they are a common opening for alimentary canal urinary and reproductive tract we call it as cloaca so the cloaca which opens to the exterior the common opening for alimentary canal urinary and reproductive tract we call it as cloaca which opens to the exterior so the respiration is by gills in case of larvae the tadpole stages they have gills and lungs and skin in case of uh, the adults so you find that they also undergo cutaneous respiration as, as well as buccopharyngeal respiration pulmonary respiration also you can notice in case of these amphibians so respiration is by gills in case of uh, the larval stages the tadpole stage and uh, respiration is by lungs and skin in case of adults okay the sexes are separate you can differentiate between male and female uh, individuals so there is so male and female individuals are separate they are dioecious fertilization is external that is fertilization takes place in the water so they are egg laying oviparous and development is indirect since they have a larval stage development is indirect so you can notice the digestive system of frog okay rana uh, tigrina okay so or rana exadactyla you also have here so they have this lungs they have the liver so they have stomachs they have the small intestine and uh, rectum through they open out through the cloaca so they also have the large intestine they also have the urinary bladder which opens through the cloaca so this is the uh, internal organs of a frog so the tadpole they have this gills external gills you can notice in case of this tadpole or uh, they have this external gills that you can notice so their respiration is by gills if you remove a tadpole out of water they die out of suffocation but adult frogs they undergo respiration through lungs and through their moist skin see the uh, frog the male frog is seated on the top of the female frog during this mating process so both of them liberate their gametes into the water so the stimulus is there when the male liberates the male gamete and female liberates the egg cell it is liberated into the water the male and female gametes are fused into the water and there the zygote develops to form the embryo embryo later forms the tadpole and the tadpole undergoes metamorphosis to form the adult frog so this is the developmental uh, stages in case of frog so external fertilization this is the mating process so they do not have any external copulatory organs so through the cloaca they are liberating the gametes so cloaca is a common opening for urinary system alimentary canal as well as for the reproductive tract through the cloaca they liberate the egg cell as well as the sperm cells and they are fused in the water so the zygote develops in the water 
So if we are going to study embryology in animals, we usually study the frog. Uh, we take frogs embryology as an example because to study it is easy as the fertilization is external. The development of zygote in embryo can be observed in the uh, water and you don't uh, have to dissect the animal to study each and every stage since the development is indirect. So this is a way of uh, studying them in uh, the developmental biology. We take the frog's embryo as an example. Yes, so that is about the uh, general characters of it. Let us look into the examples of this uh, glass amphibia. Bufo is the toad. See, they are very fleshy and large in size, but many predators don't pre prefer them because they have a dry skin with poisonous warts. It causes indigestion or toxicity in them. That is the reason they don't prefer uh, predating the uh, toad. Okay, so the Rana hexadactyla, so which is the uh, frog, you find it in the water. They have a moist skin, moist, uh, slimy skin they have. Okay, then the tree frog, Hyla, which are very small uh, in uh, size. So the tree frog is also there. Then you have the salamander, the tail amphibian. Okay, you have the salamander. Uh, so here also you have the salamander. Then equally obsessors without limbs, just like snake they are. So limbless amphibian is ichthyopsis. So these are some of the examples. Sometimes they ask you the limbless amphibian. In the match the following, they might give you ichthyopsis, uh, the tailed amphibian, salamander. So the tree frog, hyla. So you should remember about this scientific name as well as the unique attribute of them. Salamander, they have tailed amphibian. Uh, most of the amphibians are without tail, but few like salamander has a tail. Ichthyopsis is limbless amphibian. They don't have fore limbs and hind limbs. So they have a crawling mode of life. So we call this ichthyopsis as a limbless amphibian. The next class that we are going to study is reptiles. Reptiles include snake, the crocodiles, gharial, alligator. They are all different types, okay? Uh, then the tortoise, they are also under this reptiles. Tortoise and turtle, they are under the reptiles. Lizard, garden lizard, uh, that is the aurani. Then usruvalli, uh, the chameleon. All of these are placed under reptiles. See the golden age of reptiles, the Jurassic period, you know, when dinosaurs were dominating the earth, they were huge, gigantic dinosaurs were there. For us, fortunately at present, most of the reptiles are uh, smaller sized one and they are all not aggressive as the dinosaurs were there, except for a few poisonous ones like the snakes and others. So remember the class Reptilia, so the reptiles, they have examples of snakes, tortoise, turtle, uh, the chameleon, uh, monitor lizard, wuda, what we call it as, uh, then the uh, aurani, that is the garden lizard, uh, the chameleon is usruvalli. So all these are examples, crocodiles. Uh, crocodile, there are three, uh, three types of them, crocodile, alligator, gharials. So three types of them are there. So they are all placed under the class Reptilia. So they, what, you are, what are the characteristic features of Reptilia? Salient features of class Reptilia are, they have a dry and cornified skins. So you can notice this cornified and dry skin. They have epidermal scales, exoskeleton has scales. Epidermal scales, or we also call it as scutes, even in the frog. Uh, whenever they are shedding the skin, you might notice all those. So they have this epidermal scales or scutes. Snakes and lizards, they shed their scales as skin cast. So ectysis or uh, molting, we call it as ectysis or molting. You can see the skin cast. So snakes and lizards shed their scales as skin cast. 
limbs are two pairs if they are present they are limbs are two pairs that is a pair of forelimb and hind limbs limbs are two pairs they exhibit crawling mode of locomotion okay so in case of snakes especially you can notice the crawling mode of locomotion tympanum represents ear they don't have ear lobe or pinna directly the tympanum represents the ear so you have to remember about that so they have a dry and cornified skin they have epidermal scales or scutes on them the snakes and lizards they shed their scales as skin cast you can notice here they are shedding their scales as skin cast limbs two pairs if present you can notice it in the lizard in the crocodile uh, in case of uh, the turtle or tortoise you can say that they they are having two pairs of limbs they have crawling mode of locomotion so tympanum represents the ear in case of these reptiles so they have a three chambered heart but a septum partially separates ventricle uh, partially separates the ventricle it is not completely separating it so we still call them as three chambered heart even though a septum partially separates the ventricle but in case of crocodile the heart is four chambered okay heart is four chambered in case of crocodiles they are poikilothermic or cold blooded animals so the reptiles are also poikilothermic or cold blooded animals and you can notice that their body temperature is based on the external conditions of it they have a well developed alimentary canal they have a complete digestive system and well developed alimentary canal you can notice respiration in case of these reptiles are by lungs internal fertilization takes place within the female genital tract uh, the fusion of male and female gametes take place so this is nothing but internal fertilization the reptiles are oviparous they lay eggs okay and they have a calcareous shell so the reptiles are oviparous development is direct there is no larval stage so they directly the young ones develop into the adult so the development is direct so you can notice that they have a four chamber three chambered heart even though they have a partial septum uh we call it as three chambered heart the ventricle has a partial septum but in case of crocodile it is a four chambered heart that you can notice so the respiration is by lungs they are poikilothermic that is their body temperature is dependent upon the external uh, uh, surroundings they have a well developed digestive tract or alimentary canal fertilization is internal within the female genital tract and uh, they lay eggs they are oviparous that is they lay eggs development is direct because there is no larval stages so the examples for this reptiles kilon or turtle is an example for reptiles the testuda or tortoise is an example for reptiles kilon is turtle so you should remember the scientific names here kilon turtle testudo tortoise chameleon the tree lizard commonly called as tree lizard the chameleon is also an example for reptiles hemidactylus the wall lizard so which we find in our domestic uh, places uh, homes the wall lizard is hemidactylus and the garden lizard calotus that is haurani the calotus so usruvalli is chameleon uh, garden lizard is calotus crocodiles crocodiles crocodile they have a larger mouth okay so alligator uh, they are different they have a snout which is smaller gharial is much more smaller uh, snout they have then snakes uh, most of us uh, are scared of the snakes isn't it nearly 95% of them are non poisonous only 5% of them are poisonous snakes reptiles they are placed under reptiles they don't have limbs limbless reptiles they are naja cobra is highly poisonous naja naja that is king cobra uh, we also call it as nagaraja isn't it naja naja king cobra the bangaras or crate this is also poisonous vipera this is also poisonous snakes okay a few examples of poisonous snakes are naja naja or king cobra bangaras or uh, the scientific name is bangaras bangara or something you can remember it as crate okay 
then the viper uh, viper is also a poisonous snake the non poisonous snakes are python python is non poisonous so these are the uh, types of snakes that you should also be aware about which are placed under reptilia the next class that we are going to study is class aves or birds so for the first time you see that see there is a connecting link between reptiles and birds uh, the archaeopteryx so that is the fossil form flying reptiles are considered to be a connecting link between reptiles and birds so the birds they have presence of feathers and beak is a characteristic feature of birds so they have feathers exoskeleton is modified as feather they don't have hairs we don't have exoskeleton as feathers we have exoskeleton as hair in case of reptiles and fishes the exoskeleton is in the form of scales so you should understand what is the exoskeleton in different organism see in case of birds the exoskeleton is in the form of feathers they have beak so presence of feathers and beak the four limbs of these birds are modified into wings since they have a aerial uh, mode of life or volant type of life so their body weight should be less so they have a hollow pneumatic bones hollow bones which we call it as pneumatic bones so they have to reduce their body weight so and their uh, four limbs are modified as wings in birds the four limbs are modified as wings so the jaws are modified as beak okay so the dry skin they have without glands so the birds have dry skin without glands except the oil gland which is present at the base of the tail so they have a dry skin without glands and uh, they have this oil glands at the base of the tail so the hind limbs have scales so the hind limbs are having scales and they are modified for walking swimming or clasping tree branches see looking into the shape of this hind limb uh, which is pushed forward to balance the body of this birds whenever they are walking so the hind limbs are modified for walking so there the feet would be different type swimming they have the webbed feet or clasping tree branches so you can notice those things and the hind limbs you can also notice the scales they have long hollow pneumatic bones to reduce the body weight and to assist in their flight they have long hollow pneumatic bones so tympanum represents the ear even in them they don't have external ear lobes instead the tympanum represents the ear okay so the tympanum is nothing but the ear drum they represent the ear so you can notice this pneumatic bones long hollow uh, pneumatic bones which reduces the body weight they have tympanum which represents the ear the jaws are modified into beaks based on the type and shape of the beak you can understand their different mode of nutrition whether they are scavengers whether they are predators or whether they are seed eating based on the type of beak itself we can identify them okay so the jaws are modified as beaks they have the four limbs modified as wings exoskeleton is in the form of feathers so they have a long hollow pneumatic bones tympanum represents their ears so the hind limbs have scales and the hind limbs are modified for walking swimming or clasping the tree branches if they have webbed feet we can understand they are uh, the uh, swimming birds okay so apart from that they have four chambered heart birds exhibit four chambered heart birds and mammals they are homeothermic or warm blooded animals they have a constant body temperature so birds have four chambered heart so they are homeothermic they have warm blooded animals the digestive tract has additional chambers in case of these birds that is the crop is there and gizzard okay so they also have double respiration they exhibit the birds they exhibit double respiration they have air sacs connected to lungs so they have double respiration they have air sacs connected to lungs especially in flight mode it assists in breathing so they have double respiration air sacs are connected to the lungs so internal fertilization is noticed so they are oviparous they lay eggs 
development is direct they don't have any larval stages so development is direct so digestive tract has additional chambers that is the crop and the gizzard you can notice in case of birds apart from that the double respiration is noticed so wherein the air sacs are located are connected to the lungs so they have double respiration and air sacs are connected to the lungs so they undergo internal fertilization that is fertilization is within the female genital tract they lay eggs calcareous uh, shell they have on the eggs they are oviparous they are egg laying animals so development is direct since they don't have any larval stages so development is direct in case of birds so homeothermic animals are warm blooded animals they are the animals having ability to maintain a constant body temperature now let us uh, see some of the example of this birds corvus is the crow scientific name of crow pigeon is columba the scientific name is generic name is columba cytacula that is parrot the scientific name is cytacula or cytacula struthio not struthi it is struthio ostrich the scientific name is struthio so the pavo cristata scientific name of peacock so you should remember this name pavo cristata okay peacock is the scientific uh, scientific name is pavo cristata national bird of india so you should remember the scientific name pavo cristata uh, peacock is scientific name is pavo cristata the males are having this uh, wonderful feathers okay so peacock it is so which is attractive and wonderful to see the females are not having such a dense plumage or feathers it's not noticed in case of peahen so remember about this pavo cristata the national bird uh, of india is the peacock so the scientific name you should remember pavo cristata then the penguin so aptenoditis atenoditis where p is silent atenoditis penguin so then the vulture so which is a scavenger okay so neophron so they are the uh, scientific name of vulture which is a scavenger so corvus is the scientific name of crow columba pigeon cytacula p is silent there uh, that is scientific name of parrot struthio scientific name of ostrich pavo cristata scientific name of peacock then uh, the uh, atenoditis the scientific name of penguin then vulture the scientific name is neophron so neophron is a scientific name of vulture so you can notice different types of beaks that also indicates their mode of nutrition whether they are uh, insect eating seed eating or they are scavengers or whether they are predators so the beaks have different shapes for the type of nutrition that they have so the last class that we will be studying under this tetrapoda is class mammalia as the name indicates brush feeding animals mammalia so the word mammy means brush so brush feeding animals they are all placed under class mammalia even the apes uh, the primates are placed under the class mammalia so the presence of mammary glands that is milk producing glands is noticed in these animals skin uh, the exoskeleton has is hair that is skin has hair so they have two pairs of limbs mammals have two pairs of limbs for walking running climbing burrowing swimming or flying okay so mammals you can notice the flying mammals that is bat egg laying mammals are also there platypus and uh, echidna they are the egg laying mammals then there is pouched mammals like marsupials are there some of the pouched mammals like kangaroo uh, they are all under this mammalia placental mammals so the majority of them are placental mammals a few of them are marsupial mammals or pouched mammals then egg laying mammals are also there flying mammal i told you bats are example for flying mammal so you should be aware about these various varieties of mammals but majority of them are placental mammals okay they have presence of mammary glands the milk producing glands is noticed in case of the 
these animals. The exoskeleton is modified as hairs, whereas in case of birds, it was feathers. In case of mammal, it is hair. So they have two pairs of limbs for walking, running, jogging, swimming, climbing, burrowing, flying, as in case of bats. So external ear or pinna is noticed in all these mammals. So they have this pinna. So external ear or pinna is noticed in all these mammals. They have four chambered heart. So they are homeothermic or warm blooded animals. The mammals are homeothermic or warm blooded animals. They have a constant body temperature. Okay, they have a well developed alimentary canal. Mammals have a well developed alimentary canal. Dentition is heterodont, decodont, and diphyodont. So dentition is heterodont means they have different types of teeth like incisor, canines, premolars, and molars. In case of herbivores, the canines are lesser. But in case of carnivores, the canines are more. So you can see this canines. So the predators, the flesh-eating animals, they have this carnivorous teeth or corehal, what we call it as. Okay, the herbivores, they won't have much of canines. So the different types of teeth are there, which we call it as heterodont. You can find incisors, canines, premolars, and molar type of teeth. So the canines are to tear uh, the flesh or food. So the incisors are to cut the food. Premolars and molars are for grinding the food. Okay, uh, thecodont, the teeth are found within cavities the teeth are found within the cavities so that is why we call it as tecodont and diphyodont because they have two set of teeth in their lifetime the milk set or temporary set and the uh, permanent set or the secondary set of teeth are there so since they have two set of teeth in their lifetime we call it as diphyodont so dentition in case of mammals are heterodont tecodont and diphyodont respiration in mammals is by lungs okay so the sexes are separate and you can even notice sexual dimorphism uh, the sexes are separate so male and females can be identified uh, and differentiated also sexual dimorphism is also there morphologically you can differentiate between male and female so sexes are separate and they exhibit internal fertilization that is fertilization takes place within the female genital tract of the animal in case of mammal, mammals the fertilization is internal so it takes place the fusion of male and female gamete takes place within the female genital tract in uh, human beings, it is in the fallopian tube that the fertilization takes place. Later, they get implanted to the uh, walls, endometrium wall of uterus, and they have this placental connection. Okay, so they are viviparous. They give birth to egg ones, except echidna and platypus. So they are egg-laying mammals, except for them. Almost all the mammals, they give birth to young one. They are viviparous. Development is direct. So there is no larval stages. Directly, the young one develops into the adult. So this is what is the characteristic feature of this class mammalia, which are the brush feeding animals. So now if you look into the examples of this mammalia, you can notice this platypus, which is nothing but ornithorhynchus, duck-billed platypus, we call it as ornithorhynchus or platypus. The macropus, pouched mammal, kangaroo, national animal of Australia. So the kangaroo, so pouched mammal, you can notice in case of kangaroo. Then the flying mammal, tyropus. So this is a bat, flying fox. So tyropus, it's an example for flying mammal, macaca monkey, example for primates then herbivores we have this cow the carnivores we have this lion as an example for carnivore lion tiger cat uh, even the uh, these are canine and the felines canines are dog fox wolf the bear they're all under the canines okay uh, so they are uh, the felines are the cat family the dog family, you can notice them. Then the herbivores, you find this cow. So here you have odd, odd toed and even toed uh, animals are there, ungulates. So we are not going into those details, but remember them. Then uh, mammals also include this uh, ship of the desert, that is the camelus. 
scientific name is camelus camel ratus or rat rodents the rodents includes the guinea pigs rat mice bandicoots then there is also the squirrels which are all placed under this rodent family so example is ratus or rat then dog canis so it is a mammal and it is uh, in the dog family the felines you have this felis domestica the cats elephas elephant pachyderms they are also example for the mammalians then there are secondary aquatic adaptations in mammals that is the blue whale the largest mammal is blue whale that is balenoptera uh, the dolphin is also a mammal so delphinus we call it as the common dolphin uh, delphinus is also a mammal uh, then the blue whale is a largest mammal uh, it is have they exhibit secondary uh, aquatic adaptations that is their fore limbs are modified as fins so their uh, hind limbs are modified as the caudal fin so they are adapted for the aquatic mode of life so the whales the uh, blue whale is the largest mammal so balenoptera or blue whale delphinus the common dolphin is also a mammal okay equus the horse is a mammal then the uh, tiger panthera tigris is a mammal it belongs to carnivore animals panthera leo lion is a mammal okay so these are the various things that you have to remember regarding the uh, families of these uh, various families you have to remember various class you have to remember and examples of mammalia okay so that completes our complete discussion of uh, phylum the uh, the animal kingdom itself we have completed the entire syllabus you have any doubts or clarification students you can inquire and get it clarified from me